Merry Christmas Eve, everybody. Can we quite believe that it's Christmas Eve? It was only yesterday that we started opening these little drawers in our advent calendar. And now, quite bittersweet, it's the last one, 24. I wonder why they never have 25th day on an advent calendar. It's strange, isn't it? But let's see what is in 24. And as Eleanor and I said on the show this morning, if you happen to catch it, We've got rather a special item in box number 24. I've never seen it before in the flesh. I've never worked with it before. And I've been told just how incredibly rare and special it is. So to have it as part of the advent calendar and to finish on Christmas Eve, I just think is very, very, very special. So we've got door 24. Here we go. We have, as I said, I've never, I've never worked with this before. I knew nothing about it. Here we go. We have indoor, I know, indoor 24. We just had a squeal from Adam in the gallery. We have the most beautiful mellow pearl. Now this is a very, very rare pearl and it isn't a power, I spoke to Eleanor this morning, you told me a little about it. It's very rare and it isn't made from nacre. It's actually the inside of the shell. It's a chemical makeup, as I said, it, doesn't ha it only happens in one particular mollusk. And apparently the lines that you get on the wellow pearl are called flaming. And the more lines, the more flame the pearl has. So as you can see with this one and the one that I had for my piece of jewelry is absolutely top first class quality. And as I said, without doubt, one of the most high end and one of the most rarest items that we've bought to air on JM. So I'm absolutely thrilled that not only have I been given it to play with, but it's also the finale of our advent calendar. So when I got this home, I thought, what shall I do with this? And I decided that it's really nice because we only get a limited time on Jewelry Maker to actually demo. It's not very often that we have an elaborate piece of jewelry, a seed bee piece of jewelry that we can actually do from start to finish. So I went through my extensive stash of made up pieces of jewelry and this is one of my all-time favorite pieces it's a flower mandala and it really needs to be something rather special in the center and i couldn't think of anything more special than the mellow pearl so as you can see right in the center of this double layered mandala we have that beautiful beautiful mellow so i'm going to be able to show you this entire mandala hopefully from start to finish in the hour that i've got today so i think it's a it's a lovely way to to end the advent calendar month so you sit down with a cup of tea, or if you're working along, if you are working along, what I've got down in front of me is everything that you're going to need. So there's our lovely little, I don't want to lose that, little mellow. So because I'm going to be using 15-0 seed beads, I've gone for a size 11 tulip needle. Tulip needle is my favorite needle, as many of you know, so any, any chance to use the tulips, this is the size 11. So as I've just mentioned, you will need a tube of 15 O's. I've gone for a gold. You'll need a tube of 11 O's. I've gone for this amazing lined amethyst. You'll need a tube of eight O's. And I wanted to try and choose seed beads that were in line with the mellow. So I think we've done really well. So I've gone for bronze for the eight O's. So 15s, 11s and eights in your seed beads. Then you'll also need from your stash either a four mil round or what I'm using here or a bicone I'm using some fire polished beads these are four millimeter in again in a matte gold then you'll need a six mil round so I've gone for some shell pearls here I haven't decided yet which to use either go for an antique bronze dark chocolate color or this amazing orangey rust I still haven't decided I'll work that out right to the end Fire line I'm going to be using is a four pound. This is a black satin. We're going to be doing quite a few multiple passes. So I'm using four pound as it's the finest gauge that we do. It's still very strong, but it is one of the finest gauges that we have here on JM. So if you are a seed beader and you ever see this coming up on the show, snaffle it and just pop it to one side for all your massively detailed pieces. So that is all you're going to need. Obviously sharp pair of scissors. And then when you come to finish your piece of jewelry, you'll need a clasp. To finish it off. So this piece of jewellery, as I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it across and you'll be able to see it. And I just wanted to show you. So this is the top of the mandala. Okay, so this is the top. And as you can see, if I flip it over, 
that's the reverse. Both sides are equally as beautiful, so it is reversible if you wanted to. But if I just show you that it actually separates, there's actually two mandalas in one, if you like. So they're not attached together, they're actually floating. So all that's holding them together is that little surround of antique bronze, eight O's going through the center, and your mellow pearl. So if you want to wear it, you can actually manipulate it so that the central floret stands proud if you want to, or you can just flatten it down, but you've still got that double layer. So that's the front, and we've got the back as well. So you, you still see that lovely mellow pearl, but we've just encased it really snugly and very safe in the mandala. Okay, so I'll just pop this back and we'll make a start. So the first thing we need to do is we need to do our surround of our mellow pearl. So for this, you will need your Ato seed beads. So I've done all the workings out for you here. So if you just follow my instructions, if you find that you want to use a different bead for this technique, depending on the size, you will need to add more Ato's, <coughs> excuse me, or go down a couple in number. But this, the, the technique is exactly the same. So I've threaded my needle and because we're going to be lot doing lots of rounds, I've got a length of thread about six foot. Because the mandala is quite delicate, I'm, I try not to add because I don't want an extra knot to ruin the design. So I, I, I think six feet is probably going to be long enough. So we're going to, now first of all, we're going to encase our lovely pearl. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to pull through the pearl. And I'm not going to add a stopper bead because we're going to tie it straight away. And what I'm going to do is I'm exiting the top of the pearl. I'm going to add seven of my eight O beads. And I'm going to go round to the bottom of the pearl and I'm going to thread through. Like so. And then I'm going to go around this side and I'm going to do the same. So I'm going to pick up seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to go round and down through the other side. Like so. Now, can you see that we've got a gap at the top and we've got a gap at the bottom? So to rectify that, what we're going to do so I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to take it through one side of my eight O's. Thread all the way through. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is hold it out nice and tight is I'm going to take one more eight O and I'm just going to sew through that gap into the next group of eight O's. Make sure I don't get my tail in the way. I'm going to pull that through. And you can see that that end then. Don't worry if the beads are loose at this point because we're going to tighten it at the end. And then we're going to take our needle through to get to the top. And then we're going to approach that gap. Pull that through. And then we're going to fill that gap with one more 8 -o. So we should have altogether 16 eight o's and that will surround your mellow pearl which i believe is an eight millimeter round so just going to continue until we get to the tail at the top which is just there so i'm going to just check where that tail is it's coming through there so i'm going to pull that through and then i'm going to tie a single knot like so, and just make sure that that's sitting nice and central before you tie fully. That's one knot, and I'm just going to tie a double knot. Like so. Okay, so now when you lay that down, you have your mellow pearl perfectly surrounded with 16 of your eight O's. So, because to get that articulation, to get the double layer, we need to repeat what we've just done with our eight O's. But because we've already surrounded, because we've always already used the drill hole, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do a bit of right angled weave. So we're going to do this all the way around. So I'm exiting an eight O. I'm going to pick up an eight O. 
and I'm going to go round the back and through two eight o's. So then when we pull that through, you can see then that that eight o sits alongside. So don't worry if it's if it's sitting at a jaunty angle because what we're going to do at the end is we're going to combine them all together. So going to, coming out of a eight o, round the back, up through two. Okay, you can see you can see now that they're starting to sit side by side. So next, round the back. As long as you remember that little saying, round the back, up through two. Just make sure that the threads don't tangle. So round the back through two. Round the back up through the two. So in the whole design, this is probably the most fiddliest part and we're going to get it out of the way pretty quick into the design. So just worth taking that extra little bit of time just to spend getting that nice and neat. So round the back through two. And I'm using, a, I'm using the black and I think that'll disappear nicely in the color of the seed beads that I've chosen. So round the back through two. So at this point, we're going to be doing this particular move 16 times. And so what I did there is I picked up two. Perfect, let me just slide one of those off. There we go. So. back on track now yeah so as I was saying this the beginning of this move and what we're doing now you'll do everything 16 times and then from then on everything you'll be doing eight times so all will be revealed when I get to that point so again pick up one through two pick up one through two So we're nearly there. As I said, this is probably the most fiddly and time consuming part. There we go, just make sure, as I said, those threads don't overlap and get tangled up. back through two. So we're going to be laying these beads down flat in a second, but if you wanted to, you could leave them out proud and you'd have a, a, a flower shape if you wanted to, at the start of a mandala. So we've just got two left to do. So round the back through two. And then through the back, round the back, and through two. Okay, so we've got that nice and neat. So if I, as I said, if I lay that down, you can see that you've got this floral pattern. But what we're going to do is I'm exiting through this 8 here. I'm going to step up to get to the outside. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut my tail off because it's getting in the way. There we go. And then what we're going to do, this is a nice th this is a nice part, is what we're going to do is we're just going to sew the row that we've just added, we're just going to sew all the way around, pulling nice and tight, and we're going to mould them around that mellow pearl. So we're just going to sew all the way around, pulling nice and tight. And you can see it's starting to envelop and you've got you get a double row of your eight O's okay, all the way around. Pulling nice and tight, just keep going all the way around. And you can do this with any round gemstone that you have. And you just, it's a really nice way of bezel setting around. 
So you're pulling that nice and tight all the way around. And then you can see, before you, you pull too tight, just check that you've got equal amount of your pearl both sides. You will find that one side will have slightly less. As you can see on mine now, look, I've got slightly more at the top. So you'll use that as your front of your design, and then this would be the back. So I'm just going to go around a couple more times, pulling nice and tight. Because we're using a very fine thread, and we're using an 8.0 seed bead, you can go around three or four times before we start doing our next rounds. Again, pulling nice and tight. And you've got this nice little beaded cage all the way around the outside. Okay, so I think that will that will do. Pulling them nice and tight. Okay. So don't worry at the moment this is still loose because when we start adding our next little mandala rounds, this will all pull in together. So what we're going to need now, we're going to need our 11 O's. So as I said, I've gone for this amazing, it's called Amethyst Gold Luster. Uh, as I said, just choose, choose a bead that you think will tie in with your design. So as I mentioned, we've done that 16 times. From now on, everything will be eight times we'll be doing, okay? So everything will be halved. So what we're going to do is, you can see now that I'm exiting one of my eight O's. So what we're going to do, we're going to make these little beaded triangles. So I'm going to pick up three. So one, two, three. And I'm going to jump an eight O into an eight O. So jump one through one. And you get this little triangle. And what happens is the inner eight O gets pushed into your mellow pearl, which holds it more in position. So we're going to pick up one, two, and three. Jump one through one. Nice and tight. And again, you can already see the position has changed. We've got to start to get these little triangles forming. So one, two, three. Jump one through one. So because we're doing this type of technique, you need to make sure that the surrounding eight O's around whatever bead you use has to be an even number. It won't work with an odd. So just bear that in mind when you're doing your little bead surrounds. So again, we're going all the way around. So one, two, three. Miss one through one. All the way around. Miss one, through one. Keep going round. One, two, three. This is a very relaxing demonstration, so I hope you're, <laughs> you've got a cup of tea or coffee with you, and, or you might be making along. Okay, so this is our last section. So one, two, three, so this is our eighth. We're going to miss one, and we're going to go through one. So already I can feel the tension around that pearl is much stronger. Just make sure that's sitting in position nice and neatly. Okay, so if I lay that down now, you, so you can see now that we've got our eight little triangles around the outside. So what we're going to do now is, there's a little gap in between the little sections where there's an 8-0 sitting. So what we're going to do is, we're going to sew through the next group of three 11 O's, and we're going to fill the gap with another 8-0 all the way around. So I'm just going to sew through that. Okay, so we're going to fill in the gaps between those groups of 11 O's with an 8-0. So I'm going to take an 8-0, sew through the three 11s. Okay, you can see now that that stands proud either side. Okay, so we've got two 8-0s side by side. So we're going to continue this all the way around. So every time you do a round, you're strengthening the round before. So by the time you get your finished mandala section, it's firm and very safe to wear. That round, okay, then we're gonna add another eight. Oops, there we go. Let's make sure that's sitting in position. in position and don't worry if it's not sitting completely straight at this point because it will when we come to do the next round 
it will. Okay, so we've done three, filling in the gaps, sewing through the 11 O's. in the gap so you want your 8 -o. if you had something like a 4 mil round you could you could do this technique but use 11 O's as your surround to start with and you go quite delicate but exactly the same technique there we go so that's through the 11 so what we're doing is we're strengthening those little groups of 11s every time we add an 8 -o. All the way around. Okay, two left. You can always keep an eye on this design as well because you just count the little sections that you've done at the beginning of each round. There we go. So this is going to be number seven. So we've done our eight, eight O's. So if I lay that flat downwards, so this is the front looking down at the back and you can see the eight points. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, again, we're going to go all the way around. So what I want to do is just going to check where I last came out. There, okay. So I'm going to now, I'm going to sew up through the next 8 -o. And what we're going to do is we're going to do picots on all of those eight anchor points. So we're going to pick up three eights. We're going to go round. And you can now see that we've got these little picots. We're going to go all the way around. So through the three, the eight to so go through the three through the three elevens so this is why I mentioned at the beginning that it's important that you have your size 11 or size 12 needle because there are multiple passes this will be the last time you'll go through those 11 O's so we do our next pico, one, two, three, all the way through. Oops. Excuse me a second, I've got all. So it looks like a little a little snowflake little pattern. So again through the eleven. I'm feeling so relaxed doing this technique, but um it wouldn't be very interesting to watch in deep silence, so you will <laughs> I hope I'm not coming across. Okay, so we're going around again. Pull that through. And then we're going up through. One, two, three. So it's always, again, it's always three. Moving out of shot a bit there. There we go, so round. 
and up through the 311s. And it's already starting to take shape. So penultimate, so through the eight, and then one, two, three. Picos are quite time consuming, but they, they need to be done to get into the position to add your shell pearls. Because if you didn't have the big spaces in between, it wouldn't take the space. Pull this through, through the last eight. And then three more eights, one, two, three. And then I lay that down again. Okay, so again, I'm looking from the looking from the front, looking down, and just position those little eight toes. So you've got your you've got your eight snowflake points ready. So you can see now there are larger spaces here to pop in your next round. Okay, so I need to get to the point of my next pico. So I'm just going to sew round a bit further. that through and then I'm going to go through the pico the inner eta of the pico and then I'm going to take the thread I'm going to follow the bees round so I end up being on the outside of the snowflake okay so you can see this is where I am on the snowflake as I said bear in mind that this is the back because this is the inner front row that we'll do shortly so now what we're going to do is we're going to fill in the gaps all the way around the outside. And these consist of a 15O. We're not going to need any more 8Os on this section. It will just be your main beads. So we're going to be using our 15Os and our 6mm round pearls. So I'm going to I'm going to go with let's go with the rusty orange color so obviously everything is in groups of eight so this is a nice design if you want if you've got odds and ends left of strands as long as you've got eight of something you're able to do the design so this is this is a bit quicker now now we've done our picos we've done the time consuming bit so we're going to pick up a 15 a shell pearl obviously i'm using shell pearl i'm a massive fan of shell pearl but you can use any six millimeter round and can you see what i've done is I've jumped the gap from eight to eight. So I'm going to do that all the way around. So 15, shell pearl, 15 O, jump the gap, all the way around. And it's the perfect distance to take those next, next little sections. So 15, then a shell pearl, then a 15. Jump the gap to the outside edge of the pico to the outside edge. Again, all the way around. So 15 O, shell pearl, 15. Jump the gap, put nice and tight. Perfect, you can see that's sitting. So everything now is very, very firm and rigid, which is what we want because we need, as I said, we need to do another round yet. So again, corner to jump the gap. I'm glad I chose this color actually, it's very nice. It's, it seems to work quite well against the antique bronze. But obviously we don't want to detract too much away from that central opal and I think it's standing out proud still. So, okay, so I'm going all the way around. Then I've got my 15, my shell and my 15. Jump the gap. And then we're going to do the last one. So we've got 15, then a shell pearl, then a 15. I'm going to jump the gap. And just beware, when you jump the gap on your last one, you've got your group of four. Don't sew through the immediate eight. This one here, you need to make sure that it's the one that's at the top of the pico. So we'll just pull that through. And then you can see then that we've got our 
six mil rounds in position all the way around. So the next round is we're going to sew through the 15 and the shell pearl. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill in the gap between shell pearl to shell pearl above the round of 15s that we've got there already. Okay, And this combination is two 15s and 11 and two 15s. So two 15s and 11 0 and two 15s. And all we're going to do is we're just going to sew from shell pearl to shell pearl. So don't th sew through any of the seed beads in between shell pearl to shell pearl. So just make sure when we sew through that pearl that we don't go into the 15 the other side. So you can now see, if I lay that down, we've got this interesting little curve on the outside edge. You don't have to do this, but I just wanted to add another layer. That's the thing with this technique. You can just add and add and add until you find that you've got enough. So two 15s and 11 and two 15s. Pearl to pearl, making sure you don't go through any of the beads. Pull that through. And then two 15s and 11, two 15s, pearl to pearl. Pearl to pearl. Pull that through. Two 15s, 11 0, two 15s. Jump the gap, pearl to pearl. Yeah, this is, this is looking nice. I do love this technique so much. I've done this a few times on the show. And um, when I've finished, if I have time, I'll show you the original piece of jewelry I made for the show to show you where I got the inspiration from for this piece. Two 15s, 11, two 15. Pearl to pearl. Oh, that's lovely. Two 15s, 11, two 15s. Pearl to pearl. So as I said, we do everything eight times. Once we've done that initial 16 row around the, the bead there, everything is eights. And then two 11s. And then we go pearl to pearl like so okay so that's the the back half completed so if I turn it over now you can see just how beautiful that is so you've got the open little sections around the back you've got your pearls encasing your seed bead sections so what we're going to do now is we're going to do the interior section so what we need to do so just take a bit of time with this little piece because what we need to do is we need to meander through our beading to get back down to this initial row so all i do is i just basically i'm going to thread around but i'm just going to meander through to make to try and get to this little section so i'm exiting this pearl so i'm just going to sew through the 15 and the 8 pull that through and then i'm going to go through this pico which is just that group of eights and then go through the interior bead on the Pico, and then just prise it open. So I've got my group of 11s, so I'm going to sew through those. So go up through my 11, pull that through, through the 11. So now I'm nearly at the interior section. So I'm here now, I'm going to jump across and come up through the inside of that eight o. And now I'm ready, I'm positioned to start on the interior section. So with this, what I'm going to do is, do you remember when we did the back, we did our little triangles of three eleven. So we're going to repeat that exactly the same on the front. So I'm exiting, I'm in the right direction. So we're gonna start. So one two three elevens we're going to make sure where i'm coming out so we're going to jump one through one and i said because we've got eight o's there's still plenty of space to do our beading just going to pull that through 
So we've got our little group of three, picking up one, two, three. So we're going to jump one through one. So all the time that, that pearl is still the center of attention there. So just make sure when you come to choose your colors that it doesn't impede on your, your wellow because you want that to be the focus. So we're going to pick up one, two, three. So jump one through one. There we go, pull that. So we get our next little group of three. So we're going to do this eight times. As I said, everything's eight times. One, two, three. So jump one through one. Pull that through. Now I only picked up two there. I thought I had. So I'm just going to reverse again. Sometimes if you um, if you try to reverse and you end up re-threading, all I tend to do is pull, take the needle off, pull it through, and then re-thread the needle rather than taking the needle back through, reversing and getting caught and ending up knotting your work. So just pull that thread through. There we go. So pick up my third 11-0, and then I'm going to jump one through one, that's better. So I've averted disaster simply by taking the needle off. Ca caught it in my piece of jewelry again. Okay. So pulling that through. So I've got my next group of three. One, two, three. Jump one through one. I think when you're working with a long piece of thread like I am, try to have as, as less obstacles on your desk as you possibly can. Otherwise you'll end up catching on. So one, two, three. Okay, let's just make sure where I am. So jump one through one. Pull that through. So two left. One, two, three. Jump one through one. that through and then our last one so one two three jump one through one that's our eight so as you can see we've got around the outside we've got our eight triangle sections so what we're going to do is we're going to sew through the next group of 11s and we're going to exit through the middle of the group of three so we're just going to follow around and exit through the group of three. So this is the point now where I need to decide what my next section is going to be. So what we're going to do is we're just simply going to pick up our fire polished. So these are your four millimeter fire polished. And fire polished are then more of an oval shape rather than a round. So because of that, I discovered that when I come to do my next section, is I'm simply going to not adding any other bees. I'm just going to pick up a fire polished and go from point of the triangle across to the point of the triangle. Pull that through and can you see now that sits there perfectly. So next fire polished, point of the triangle to point of the triangle. And that gathers everything in nice and neatly. And you'll find that your fire polish will sit in between your shell pearl so you'll get you'll get this is where the double layer really comes into its own fire polished point of the triangle to point of the triangle make that's nice and you can now see the double layer starting to really take shape so point of the triangle to point that's four and then point to point And then we're going to do point to point. And then we'll do a couple more. Point to point. That's it. And then point to point. 
and point is already where they're waiting. And what we're going to do is going to sew up through that first fire polished bead. We're going to pull that through. Let's just make sure that's sat nice and neatly in position. So again, if I lay that flat, you can now see we've got our eight fire polished. So you can already see how quickly this builds up. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go between the fire polished and we're going to add the following combination, a 15 0 an 11 and a 15. So a combination of three, and we're just going to jump the gap from fire polished to fire polished. And you have quite large holes in the fire polished, so you can see that the gap feels absolutely perfect. So 15, 11 and a 15, fire polished to fire polish, pulling nice and tight. And as soon as you start adding these fire polish, it lifts that little second little section there so you get the separation between the two. So we want a 15, an 11, and a 15. Fire polish to fire polish. Pull that through. Fire to 11 to fire. Fire polish to fire polished. It's amazing what you can come up with just with just one focal bead in the center. So I imagine maybe a jadeite or a, an amber or, or something like that. But as I said, I don't think I've ever worked with anything as rare as a mellow pearl. So I feel quite privileged. So across, across. It's like some tropical flower, isn't it? It's absolutely lovely. So 15, 11, 15 jump the gap so from fire polished to fire polished and this again it just it just tightens everything up and it keeps it all nice and secure 15 11 and your 15 I'm going to go through and I'm going to go through the first group of three we've just added so I'm going through the fire polished through the 15 through the 11 and the 15 so I'm exiting just before that fire polished bead there so I'm going to pull that through I'm just going to lay this down and you can now see so we've got our inner flower and we've got our outer flower again you can stop there if you want to but I wanted to add another little flourish so what I've done using all my 15s I thought I've got plenty of thread left so what I'm going to do I'm going to surround my fire polished with a little florette around the outside so I'm exiting the 15-0 just before the fire polished and I'm going to pick up six of my 15 O's. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, because this is going to be the final flourish around the fire polished, it doesn't matter whether you use an odd number of your 15 O's. If you wanted to do a pico or you wanted to do another surround, you need a middle bead of which, so you'd have to add five or seven. But because I'm not going any further, six is the perfect amount. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go round the fire polished through the 15, the 11 and the 15 -0. So once again, this not only adds another little flourish, but it also adds strength to your surround. So you can see now that we've got that little, little floral section around the fire polished. So it's always six again. And we know that we do things eight times, four, five, six. It's going to go around the fire polished through the three. Okay, pull that through. And I'm going to do the same. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Around the fire polished through the three. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Round the fire polished through the three. And we're gonna go around again. So you can just see just adding that little florette just adds that little something. So round the fire polished through the group of three. Pull that through. This is such a joy being able to do the whole of the piece from start to finish. 
it's not very often that we get this opportunity so thank you all for your patience today and I hope you I hope you have a little go afterwards why am I adding an 11 stop talking one two three so that's your six so round the fire polished through the group of three so, it, so every time you add a little row as I said it stabilizes and firms everything up nice and neatly so you're just going to add one two three four five six round the flower round the fire polished through the group of three that through and then we're going to add our last little section so one two three four five six and then we go round and then we go through the three okay so that is as you can see we've got our double sided so we've got our front of our little floral section I'll flip it over and we've got the reverse and then we've got that little group so you can see I can open it quite far so to finish off all I'm going to do is I'm exiting this 15 -0. so I'm just going to go through the fire polished again pulling nice and tight through the group of three and we've got, still got plenty of room because we're using a fine gauge needle through the fire polished and we're just going to go all the way around and again this just strengthens your work because as I mentioned earlier, I'm not a fan of tying off. I'd like, if I can, I let the, the needle and the beads do the work for me. So all I would do is just go round and round and round this inner section until, and you can imagine that the 15 is going to be the first bead to be the obstruction. And at that point, I would then cut my thread. So again, I'm just gonna pull, just keep going, threading through. Threading through. Again, so through the group of three, through the fire polished. There we go. Let me take that through the three. So it's already starting to get tough now, so it, oops, so it won't be long until I can cut my thread. So we're going to go through the fire polish, through the group of three. Make sure I go through that 15 now as well. And there we go, through the fire polish. It's already starting to get a bit tough now. So I think that I would, if, um, if I had time, I'd just go, maybe if I could, and just do another round. But I think that's that's nice and rigid now so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut my thread okay so there we have our flower motif with that beautiful bead in the center so to turn it into a piece of jewelry you can see that around the outside edge we have our little section of two 15s with 11 in the center so what I would do is I would take my needle I put a stopper on one end and I would simply take my needle through one of the 15s. And this, you mentioned, uh, I mentioned earlier that if you're going to be doing anything from a section, you need an odd number to find that central point. So obviously we couldn't do that on the little florets on the inside because we had six, unless we used the two for the middle, which you can do if you want to, but I like just to have a single bead. And then we're just going to move these out of the way. So you've got your little flower and then you've got your thread coming out either side and then what you would do then is you would come up with a combination to make your necklace so we can, we've still got lots of our beads left so we're starting with 11 so what I always do if you've, you've got this 11 0 here and you've got two 15 0s either side so I start by replicating the, the beads that are nearest so I'm going to start with two 15s and then I'm going to pop let's go for an 8 then a fire polished then an eight then two 15s so slide that down and then all I would do then is just replicate what we've done here so we've got the two 15s so go into an eight 
and then let's pop on one of our shell pearls and slide that down then an 8 then two 15s and then a fire polished sorry no an 8 and then a fire polished then an 8 two 15s so you just come up with with a really nice pattern that you would then make on your necklace and then you what you do then is you would replicate it on the other side so briefly you'd continue you'd pop one half of your clasp on one end but just to show you how amazing this this fire line is you can actually use the fire line as your needle so i'm not going to take the needle off i'm just going to do a couple of these so we can go so two 15s and then we want an 80 so pick up an eight thread that on and then we started with a fire polished so pop on our fire polished and then we wanted an eight there we go so we have an eight and then we want our two 15s so one and two we've got our two 15s there and then we want an eight and then let's go for one of our shell pearls again and feed that through so you can see it even goes through the shell pearls so if you are at a, at a loose end obviously you wouldn't be able to do any of this design without a needle but if you're just doing if you're just doing a basic threading you didn't particularly want to re-thread your needle again so all you would do then is you just continue with this design and then you would pop on your clasp the other end so just thread a couple more of these on let's just take one of those off I would notice that you see and then so you just continue with this design so what I'm going to do I'm just going to move my mat out of the way and I'm going to bring the completed design today so this is the completed piece so you can see now that I, I, I went from a, a burgundy shell pearl so you can see that's my inner florette if I bring up the one I've just shown you from the start completely different look just adding a different color shell pearl okay so that's the and then if I show you the back as well so I can show you the back again so it's, it's, it's absolutely beautiful and what you can do which is what I did on here can you see I've added those little 15-0 florets around the outside of my shell pearl so again if you wanted to add another row you could do that and can you see now that we've got this gap here so if we wanted to we could add another pearl or another fire polish so you can do it again you can carry on and you can add and add so this is my mellow pearl piece that i did for the advent calendar this is the piece that i've just shown you how to make from start to finish and what i'm going to show you now is the piece that i did for the show originally which gave me the inspiration for today so you can see that it was a memory wire necklace and I've actually made three of those florets and I've again so exactly the same technique that I've just shown you here but I've made three and can you see now that I've added a little pico to one of the 11 O's on the outside edge which you then thread your memory wire through to make your little section so I've made three of those you can do you can do multiples if you wanted to and um, because we've got an even number of sections you can do maybe a peyote band to make a bracelet you could even make them into earrings if you wanted to but um, I, I, I just love the versatility, the versatility of this and the fact that it all starts from your central gemstone your beautiful wellow bellow pearl I'll just pop that back on the bus for you to have another last look at so you can see in its glory so that is your mellow opal which was the last component door 24 of your amazing advent calendar christmas day tomorrow and i would really just like to take this opportunity on behalf of myself and all of the other guest designers that took part in the advent calendar challenge this month thank you all for your continued and generous support and we've seen many of the pieces that you've had inspiration on the wall of fame so a massive thank you for taking all that and, and uh, sending those in for us big big day tomorrow it is the big day christmas day 25th of december hope you join i'm going to be definitely tuning in tomorrow we've got the amazing carol and susie on tomorrow susie's got the most 
beautiful pearl kits. We've got the most incredible trilogy launch, Carol's first ever launch for jewellery maker. Please tune in and give her all the support. We've got the most beautiful Queen Conk. You must have seen the, video, the little VT, all those incredible carvings. And that's full four hours tomorrow. So we're live in the studio Christmas Day from 8 till 12. But on behalf of myself and Elle and the crew here today, thanks for tuning in today. Hope you have the most amazing, amazing Christmas and amazing New Year. I'm back on the show, actually, the morning show with Carol on New Year's Eve. So I've got a week to wind down and, uh, and have the best time. So on behalf of myself, all the presenters, all the crew, have the most incredible Christmas tomorrow. And thanks for tuning in. Thank you.